Hello and welcome to Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous. I'm Nikki Batgirl D'Angelo, your host. This episode is not intended for children under the age of 13. It's Thursday night and I just had an opportunity to watch the latest Star Citizen Live from Cloud Imperium Games. And it really leaves a lot of room for interpretation and speculation. And you know how I get with that. Speculation just leads to disappointment down the road. But we might just speculate a little bit in today's episode. And the things that we're going to be speculating about might be something like, what is the enjoyment factor of some of the things that they're going to be introducing that they showed today? CIG has no problem being transparent and showing us the development cycle of this game. But in the grand scheme of things, some of the things that they show us are very hand-picked. So I'm going to go into the first part of this, and I'm going to build it up from this. Some of the best times that you have inside of Star Citizen today are in those missions that you run with your friends. Whether they be real missions that you pick up as a mission giver, or something that you go into Star Citizen and say, I'm just going to do my own thing. Chris Roberts from Cloud Imperium Games said that one of the best things about this game is the emergent gameplay. How people just get together and start their own, well, start their own mission, start their own, I want to give it their own experience. They create their own experience. And we see that many times with all the different races on the different planets, the different battlefields that just pop up and people show up and you have these huge battles between ships and people on the ground and vehicles, and it's just amazing. Well, Cloud Imperium Games is going to be giving us some tools to have those experiences in more of a scripted way. One mission highlighted by Cloud Imperium Games in this week's Star Citizen Live is a mission given from Twitch Pacheco. On this mission, you assault a prison ship, and you're contracted by Twitch Pacheco to go and release certain prisoners. You have to assault the ship, take out the security, get the manifest for the ship, and then find each one of the specific prisoners via their IDs and release them and then get out of Dodge before you're found out. Another mission highlighted by Cloud Imperium Games in this week's Star Citizen Live was a synced assassination mission where you were given two targets that may not be in the same area. You'd have to work with a partner, communicate, and attack and destroy both targets within the allotted time, or one of them would get away. These are starting to sound quite fun. Now, I'm going to say this. The emergent gameplay is probably going to be a lot more fun, because doing these missions, you do them once or twice, and they get a little bit boring. It's kind of like going back into the old days of MMOs. But that might not be the case for the last mission that they talk about. The last mission that they talk about is the assault on the pirate Idris. This one is a doozy, and they talk about 9 to 10 retaliators being flown by Cloud Imperium Games staff. And those retaliators firing off their missiles are doing almost no damage to the ship, or are doing enough damage, but not so much that they're taking it out pretty quickly. He, they talk about ships being blown up around them, meaning their friends, and how these AI-controlled turrets on the Idris are just devastating, and how many times people have to respawn, get in their ships, and fly back out to rejoin the fight. I think this one would be fun, but there is a catch. You will only receive this mission once, if you want to run the mission again, you'll have to find another citizen who has not run the mission, show them where to pick up the mission, and run it with them. That's quite a big caveat. It sounds like this one's going to be a rip-roaring time. I think that the limitations of only being able to run it once, and then having to find somebody else, may be turned back in the future, because I think that will be a big detractor. <laughs> down the road. I am a huge fan of the emergent gameplay within Star Citizen. 
I think it is something that has kept this game viable and in players' ears for a very long time. But with the addition of these missions that you could run with your orgs, your friends, your family, and with people you haven't met before, I think there's going to be a lot more gameplay coming to Star Citizen. I hope it's enjoyable, and I hope it comes in without many bugs in the future. From today's sprint report, I'm only going to highlight one item. You know, in every game, some people just want to play on the bad side. When I was in World of Warcraft, I was on the Horde. It was the better side, and everybody has good on their side. So I'm looking at pirates right now. The way that piracy works now is you pretty much have all the same cargo on every ship that you attack. But with one thing that they're bringing to the game in the future, there'll be a manifest report for each one of the ships that are being spawned, and each ship will pull different cargo off of that manifest report. And in that situation, whenever you go from one ship to another and blow it out of the sky, you'll receive more varied, ill-gotten booty, which should make the game a little bit more enjoyable. I'm going to hold off on discussion of the Cutlass Blue and the Prowler until those ships actually make their appearance within the PTU. And that's mainly because a lot of things that they throw at us right now might not come to pass. And I feel like the speculation of where they might go with this might just throw off our expectations. So although I own a Cutlass Blue and I'm looking forward to seeing the Prowler in the hangars of my friends, I'm just going to hold off until we're actually able to see those ships in the game. Lighting could make or break a game, but in this case, it's about bringing reality to life. Star Citizen is a game that puts us on many different planets, each one of them with their own day and night cycles. Currently, the lights are always on, whether it be night or day with Chris Roberts wanting to bring that true sense of realism in that dynamically wonderful living, breathing worlds that they're creating over at Cloud Imperium Games, lighting has been something that hasn't been working exactly like it would in reality. But now, with things that they're testing in the game today, we'll have lighting that goes between the day and night cycle. Now in this last piece, I'm really going to give opinion. And I think that sometimes the clothing that appears in Star Citizen is just not my cup of tea. I just sometimes look at it and shake my head and go, what were they thinking? Now I know diversity is important. And I know that building out the different sociological environments. I don't know what I'm saying right now. I think what I'm trying to say is I don't like what I'm looking at right now, but I know why it has to exist. These people that live in microtech are very wealthy nerds that make software and make the technology that we use every day in the universe. And then they go and hang out at Wally's bar. But in the grand scheme of thing, I think it's a little bit over the top, but no more so than some of the outfits that you see in some sci-fi movies like The Fifth Element. And I think that although it might not be my cup of tea, somewhere down the line I might find something that I really find exciting about the clothing that's in the game. I just haven't found it yet. I'm going to have to send Jay Lee a note and say, hey bud, when are we going to get some clothes that are specific for the female characters. I wonder when that's going to happen. You know, I look forward to these weekly Star Citizen Lives. Sometimes they're duds, sometimes they're exciting, and sometimes they're just an information dump like today, which is kind of interesting, but not really a wow. And I have to take a step back and say that each one of these things that they show us is just another building block in the game. I'm really excited to see new ships coming, but I'd have to say that the most exciting thing about today's video was the fact that they're starting to work on making gameplay fun for us when we're in groups, and I think that's going to be amazing. Well, folks, if you like this video, please click the thumbs up button below because it will really help me regrow my channel. And if you do subscribe, please click that bell-shaped notification icon below 
so you get notified of all my future videos. Because if you don't do that, YouTube won't tell you. And if you do want to join my growing group of patrons, you can go to patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com forward slash Batgirl. And I've updated all the benefits of becoming a patron. And with that said, you all be safe out there. And I'll talk to you soon.